Welcome to Nine Bob Note with Paul Isles Rush and Ken Moss. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nine Bob Note. My name's Paul Isles Rush. And I'm Ken Moss. And we're back taking turns again, Ken. I and we going to say back on the source then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> always. We, we never really left the source. We, it's over to you for this week's topic. The census. Ooh. Right. Now, not a particularly thorny issue, but it's following on from what we discussed a couple of weeks ago about elections. You know, we've, we've just had the local election, so I hope you all turned out to vote, boys and girls. But a couple of months ago, we had the census. It only happens every 10 years. I suspect this will be the last one that's conducted this way mm. because there's a lot. There's still a lot of paper flying about, which in 2021 seems a bit of a backward way of doing anything, really. Yeah. I think you'd, it's like with the voting. I think you get a lot more people if it was all done online. The only problem is you get fraud and, and corrupt information that, you know, it could be manipulated. There's, it's foolproof if you vote on a ballot that only you have ticked and signed, and it, it's definitely you. Yeah. But the census is uh, its a complete record of everybody that lives in the country and what they do and what their religious beliefs are, their jobs, how many people live in the house, their sexuality. And it builds up a snapshot of the country at the time. And now I really believe in it because this goes back oh, over 100 years and it's really good as a historical document to show how things change and to show how attitudes change, how beliefs change, and people themselves change, even down to what jobs they've got. You know, there's not too many milliners about nowadays or <laughs> clog makers or chimney sweeps. But you still get people, and I've seen it online, I'm not doing this, they're not finding out about me, I refuse to complete <laughs> yeah. the census. Well... <laughs> I'm sorry, Janet, they already know. As I said online the other week, Facebook will show you Amazon suggestions based on the TikToks you've been watching on Twitter. They know about you. They, they know your inside leg measurement better than you do. Not filling in a census, your age, sex, location, and when the last time you, you went to church. <laughs> They're not asking for your credit card details. <laughs> What's your feeling on it? I love the sense. I think uh, it's a really useful, useful tool. And the, yeah, these people who are complaining about it are, are the same people who won't get vaccinated against mm. COVID because it contains a chip <laughs> that allows Bill Gates to monitor your every move. But then, they'll, like you say, they'll pick up their phone, which is a huge supercomputer that contains every little piece of information about their life, about what they like what they do, where they've been, who they've spoken to. Every single thing is on there, but they won't fill in a census. And the thing about the census is the results of it are sealed, aren't they? I mean, obviously, the general general trends and stuff are released, but the I individual results are sealed oh, yeah, for yeah, there's nothing, yeah, a exactly. number of years. Well, so, we're only just getting... I think we've only just had the 1921 census, I think. So, Janet, I mean... She hasn't really got anything to worry. Her Janet's going to be long gone. Not unless she's immortal. No, I, I don't think there's any, any... Well, I don't want people knowing that I was unemployed in 2021. Uh, occupation, <laughs> tweeting. <laughs> Facebook expert. <laughs> but one of the things that I did notice, and this is looping back to our favourite topic at NBN, is sexuality. And it was still quite a narrow range of options. Yeah. Now, that's not a criticism because there, there's now there's been an explosion of different sexuality categories in the past few years. And as I've said before, it's quite difficult to keep up with. So if they included some, they would inevitably leave out some and there would be outrage. Yes. So it's, it's now an other please explain box. Yeah. But somebody still got to collate that information. Now, you might be able to explain this better to me because I've been trying to work out whether this is true or not, or whether it's just my lack of understanding, <laughs> whether certain sexualities, do they have the same, uh, two different names for the same thing, like non-binary or um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but but could that be interpreted as something else? That's that's quite different from bisexual, isn't it? And Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, non-binary is a gender identity rather than a, a sexuality. This is where you come in to educate the ignorant straight man, <laughs> yes. Yeah, but but yeah, it, it's true. So sexual orientation, I think, was on the last cens- census, but gender identity, this is the first time that people in England have, right, been, have right. been asked for the gender identity. Um, but yeah, th- there are... And I guess it's more with the gender side of things, but definitely with with sexuality. For example, bisexual, Mm. which is where you are attracted to men and women. Mm. But then there's pansexual. Well, I was going to come on to this. (laughs) Surely that's the same thing. Well, that, that it is if you follow the traditional belief that there are only two genders right okay so essentially it's the same thing bisexual i don't think there's many bisexual people who will say well you have to be either a man or a woman (laughs) (laughs) but yeah it's just it's a more general term so i guess if someone came along and you found them attractive and then you found out that they were non-binary then that perhaps places you in pansexual rather than bisexual. Although I don't think there was options for both of them on the census. I don't... Yeah, yeah. Like you say, you have to draw the line somewhere. You can't have an endless <laughs> stream. Otherwise, the data is pointless. Well, it's only as good as the, the, the context it's been given. But the the one that I'm, I've got a bit of a problem with, uh, or not so much me as potential future generations will, is transgender. Because... It's just transgender. It's not male to female, female to male. And then what about the people that are male to female to male and so on? Yes, there there was a lot of um, discussion about this within the trans community because obviously this was the first time that gender identity questions have been asked. And what the census did is it asked right at the beginning, what is your sex and the choice there was male or female. Mm. And that was, uh, you know, when you click on the little information box to say, and, and it was, what was the sex that you were assigned at birth? Or if you've undergone a transition. Right. What? So basically, what is your sex? And there were only two options. Now, I, I was speaking to someone who is a transgender woman, and la- later on in the census, you're then asked, what is your gender? What is your gender identity? And I think the options were man, woman, possible. Was there a transgender? I'm, I'm fairly sure it wasn't yeah. just that specific. Yeah. So she, she put in her gender identity, she identifies as a woman. Mm. And she didn't specify that she was transgender because her belief and the correct way of thinking about it is transgender women are women. So she ticked the box that I'm a woman. Hmm. But, and I guess, I mean, we didn't go into details about medical procedures hmm. or anything like that. But what she what she was getting at is the phrasing of the original question, what is your sex? She was almost being told that she had to tick the male box for that because of the the way it was defined. And she was like, I can't in all conscience do that, because I'm not. But surely that was the sort of the birth question. What are you... Because when, as far as I'm aware, when, when children are born now, they are classified as either male or female on the birth certificate. There's, there's no non-binary children being born. But, I mean, the, what people identify as is quite a different thing. And if that's asked later in the... You see, this is, again, where it's a bit of a minefield, because... There's a big push, you know, please treat, please don't, you know, things like dead naming and what have yeah. you. Please don't do that. It's very rude and uh, it's quite upsetting and it's just not the dumb thing in the 21st century <laughs> to just be a twat. But surely by saying I'm a transgender woman rather than I am a woman, it sort of splits you into a group that's women but not segregated. What's the word? But you, you're standing out. You're not yeah. really with... You're with, but you're still a separate group. And I, it, it confuses me because the whole push seems to be, no, we're women or yeah. we're men or whatever. Yeah, and there is, I get that there's quite a few people. And obviously uh, for a lot of trans people, you've the amount of stuff you have to go through, even just to come out as trans mm. and then, you know, tell everyone and change the way that you look, if that's what you want to do, and the way that you dress. And so a lot of them are really proud of calling themselves a trans woman. Right, okay, Um, yeah. And so then there are also people who just say, yes, yes, I am a trans woman, Mm. but 
if you ask me the question, what's my gender, I'll tell you I'm a woman. Right, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I guess giving them the choice. But, yeah, it does, it does add an extra layer of segregation. Again, doesn't bother me one way or another, but looking from the outside in, it's getting increasingly complicated to try and keep up with... A, the protocols, and B, uh, what everyone is. So to try and categorise people is now getting quite detailed. So uh, as you just said there, you could have, on a census form, like I said, as far as I'm aware, uh, please don't shoot the messenger, (laughs) uh, babies are categorised as male or female at birth uh, based on the physical attributes as far as unless that's changed, I don't think it has though. And then it's, it's afterwards that individual... Uh, makes the I hesitate to use the word choice because it's it's not really a choice, is it? But they uh, they um, they express their identity. Thank you for digging me out of that particular pit. <laughs> yes, to adequately categorise that on a census without reams and reams of very detailed questions. Yeah, I mean, how far do you drill that down? That is good. That's going to be a, a, as long as the census in itself. That's that's it, and it's it's a good point because for, for example the birth question and i think the 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 woman that i was talking to her issue was that i don't know what the wording of the question was it was uh, probably what was your gender assigned at birth or what what sex were you assigned at birth or something like that which is where, where the doctor picks you up looks between your legs and says congratulations it's a boy or it's a girl mm. and her argument was you know, I was a woman then when I was born, just because the doctor looked at me and said, congratulations, it was a boy. I was never a boy. But for in terms of the census, that's really important information because if you're saying 50% of children were, uh, were told when they were born that they were boys, but then look at the data for what they are, identify as adults, then you can sort of see... And that's that's much more information, much yes. more useful information, isn't it? And I, I get that it's quite sensitive and it's quite upsetting, but it does need to be acknowledged yeah. because otherwise it skews the data for birth rates. Just yeah. say, for example, you know, you had in the past ten years, say I don't know, let's just pick a random figure. So all of a sudden, in ten years, you've got five hundred thousand less Men. males being born on paper. It's got to raise questions for future historians. What was the reason for this? Uh, yeah. So it's not, it stops being true information in terms of on a very basic level. I don't know where I'm going with this, but, yeah. but it doesn't, it's not, it's not strictly the information that would be useful. Whereas, yeah. I mean, if, if you've said later on in the census that this is what I identify as now, and this is what I, I've always identified as, like you said, that tells you the information that you need to know as well. Yeah. It's, and, and it, it also tells you that. The doctor, you know, maybe the wording of the question, what gender did the doctor who (laughs) delivered you assign to you based on your genitals, you know, or whatever, (laughs) then no one's taken away from your, yes, we know that you have been a woman Mm. all of your life, or you've been a girl or a woman all of your life. But yeah, we still need to know what the doctor thought, because... Then as the years go on and as this becomes more and more commonplace, then people will start to say, well, actually, this is an exact, this is a really good point that doctors don't get it right a lot of the time. And that when, and that the, the test of looking in between your legs when you're born is not a proper test of what your gender is. And do we even need to do that anymore? Um, from a medical point of view, it probably does have a, um... I, I, only, only in terms of figures and say when you get things like a, uh, I don't know, just let's just say there was a pandemic. <laughs> let's just imagine a scenario where that happened. Good God! Now they've boiled that down quite a long way. As far as I'm concerned, they've not released enough information, detailed information mm. to the general public. So there's been a lot of. Uh, it's been truth, but it's been completely out of context. But <laughs> somewhere, someone will have been drilling it down to a uh, number of people who. Uh, oh, that, that'll get me into terribly hot water. But, but the <laughs> the at some genetic level, the effects that it will have on those people, even and they've been doing it with you know with the BAME community. There, there's been massive differences in yeah. that. They still don't know exactly why. A lot it could be um, biologically. We have got on some level to be different. The BAME community, the white community, we are biologically. However, superficially, 
ever so slightly different. Yeah. So however subtle the biological differences are between us all, it still helps to build up a, a wider picture. But nobody's trying to take anything away from you. It's just to, to help understand the things that we're battling in those circumstances. Yes, yeah. So using your pandemic example, I, I, I read a book recently and it, it was a, a thing where some something happens and girls are no longer born. Oh, you know, the only right. children that are born are men. And so obviously... Within a generation, yeah. we're dead. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we just... We, a, a, a world full of men and then ageing women who can no longer mm. give birth. That's an extreme example, and obviously it'd be quite obvious <laughs> what was happening. <laughs> but uh, but if, if we didn't have the information... The, and the, there is a lot of stuff where there are diseases and there are things, there are genetic conditions that are specific to men or women. Mm. And it doesn't matter what you identify as. There are, you, there are, for example, transgender women who can get testicular cancer, for example. Yes. And I, I don't know where, <laughs> where this is going. But the, the information on the census is, is important I get why some people don't like answering some of the questions, but... It's not a personal attack. No, no. No one's tracking you. No one's no one's going to narrow it down to the, the pen you've used. You're a hundred years' time when they release the individual results. Oh, how many... Right, how many non-binary people used a blue pen instead of a black pen? It could be important. <laughs> so, feather or not, is this important? The census, I think, is very important. Mm. It, I mean, on a on a broad level, it helps people to it helps companies to decide who they're aiming adverts at. It helps people to de- you know to decide where to put funding. Governments decide where to where to channel funding and um, where to aim recruitment at and things like that. And in a hundred years' time, it'll give a really good snapshot of where where we were today. And also, it's a good chance to have a bit of fun. I remember it must have been either 20 or maybe even 30 years ago when they did the census. We, I was living with my parents and in the religion box, they, there was like a big push on uh, going around that you should I, Jedi. I identify as Jedi. <laughs> and that actually, it got... It's, it I, did. It worked. <laughs> so now it's a recognised religion according to the census. Obviously, we don't recommend lying on the census to no. see the results. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. I, I've got to give... I'm going to give the census five. It might not seem that big a deal. But, well, if they really want this information, they can find it out some other way. It's the easiest way of getting it yeah. all in one... It takes five minutes to do the census, if that. Yeah, I did mine online, and it was the easiest bloody thing. They're all multiple choice. Yeah. But it's such a big thing for future historians and, and research that... Just take five minutes out of your time every 10 years. Instead of clicking on that poll for who your favourite Teletubby is, <laughs> just fill in the census. And it's a lot less painful than having a Bill Gates chip injected into your arm. Yes, uh, I had a very bad reaction to the Bill Gates chip. <laughs> it keeps trying to download Windows Vista. <laughs> <laughs> so, screening queens. Well, uh, it's my turn this week, and I've backed myself into a corner <laughs> by... Uh, there is there is one, um, but I've sort of already used... I've already played this card. It was a couple of weeks of, with the election when I suggested Yes Minister. So <laughs> I'm going to pretend that, that two weeks ago I actually suggested The Thick of It. Excellent. I'd recommend uh, Yes Minister. That'd be really good. It was a series that ran from uh, 1979 to 1988. And, but a couple of those, there was one of the very earliest episodes was about uh, a national database an integrated database where everybody's information was available in one place for civil servants to bring up at the click of a a very sensible idea. And I'm surprised that 40 years after that was transmitted, <laughs> government departments still don't have access to people's information across departments in one place on one computer program instead of several different databases, even now. <laughs> 
That sounds quite inefficient to me. Yes. It would surely avoid a lot of tax fraud and benefit fraud and errors on a government level as well if it was all in one place. Then we wouldn't need as many civil servants, though. There will always be a need for... (laughs) Civil servants are never fired. (laughs) Ever. (laughs) This is true. So, yes, that's my recommendation. The uh, Yes Minister... The Big Brother is the episode. It's, that's uh, that's quite a good one. Excellent. I, I've certainly never heard of Yes Minister before, uh, so <laughs> I'll be checking that I'm out. I'm glad I brought that up for the first time. <laughs> and of course, uh, if you want to go a bit further back than that, there's always um, the Bible. Uh, if, we, if it wasn't for the census in Bethlehem, then we would never have heard about the birth of Jesus. <laughs> well, it's difficult. <laughs> I really must read the Bible one day. <laughs> I've, I've got a, <clears throat> a burning urge to adapt the Bible. Uh, make it, you know, jazz it up a bit. It's uh, like a Game of Thrones. Well, Game of Thrones, I would like to adapt it like that. I think, you know, you've got... It starts off with a big ship with a lot of animals on it. And that, that surely... Yeah, that's got to be a dramatic scene. You would think so, wouldn't you? You know, a huge colossal garden. It, the film will open, or the series will open, with two naked people in it. How much more Game of Thrones do you want? And a dragon, essentially. Yeah, that's got HBO written all over yes. it. Yes. So uh, we'll just patent that. It will pay for our podcasting career for the end of time. <laughs> Excellent. So join us. Yeah, join us in a few weeks for episode one of the Bible. Uh, Bible of Thrones. The- <laughs> And until then, I'm sure we'll be back talking nonsense with more Nine Bob Note. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye, everyone. Nine Bob Note featured Paul Isles Rush and Ken Moss. Title music was by Mark Scheiman, and the programme was produced by Maverick Productions. For more information, please visit maverickproductionsuk.blogspot.com or find us on social media.